So there's my sidechain tool, and before I will change this uh, front caliper, first I will change this wheel hub and the steering uh, in order to have this ABS speed sensor right over here. Yeah. I know the simple way to get rock and roll I know the simple way to get you out of control I can manipulate it like a doll I say First we're jacking up the car and remove the wheel. Then we need to unscrew the axle nut which requires some serious force. The best and simplest way to keep the axle from rotating is hit hard on the brakes. The order of next actions may differ depending on tools and technique you use. Here we're using different polars and of course tons of penetrating oil. A hammer is always a right tool. Safety of the vehicle strongly depends on the suspension, that's why it's best to use the torque wrench and keep the nuts tightened according to the manual. In one of previous episodes I've mentioned uh, that I need a piece of electronics that will convert the APS speed into uh, the signal for my speedometer, which is right over here. And uh, well, here it is. I have just finished. Um, this is the pair board and another one populated uh, lies over here connected to everything that you see. Now I'm gonna demonstrate how it works. So here we've got the signal generator that will simulate the uh, ABS uh, sensor signal mm, the cluster with a speedometer and the scope the frequency on the generator will be uh, calculated for a 14 inch wheel with a 195 um, tire with a 45 profile because uh, obviously different the tire, uh, different the diameter of the wheel and, uh, and of course the frequency needed for the speedometer is different. Let's turn it on. Okay, it's uh, set to 50 Hz. So as you can see, this corresponds to more or less 10 uh, kilometers per hour on the gauge. Here at the uh, yellow signal, we've got the signal coming from the generator and it says here 50 Hz right and the lower one the blue one is the signal coming out of my board so the board is taking the signal from the ABS sensor in this case from the generator and recalculating it and then it's creating a new frequency signal that is being fed into the speedometer and as we can see the with 50 Hz on the input the signal the output is uh, more or less 43.5 Hz let's increase the frequency 
now 150 at the input and about 131 at the output and we've got almost 30 kilometers per hour let's go even farther now 350 on the input 294 on the output 67 kilometers per hour okay now let's go a bit higher right boom boom yeah now we've got 950 hertz at the input which gives us well roughly 822 hertz at the output and this is as you can see the limit of the of this gauge well it's not actually the limit it's, it's the last value on the scale 180 kilometers per hour uh, I found out that this particular gauge has a limit at around 200 after that it uh, returns to zero this is probably some limitation in the uh, software of that, of that gauge but uh, so I've did uh, some precautions of course so we can go even higher I would say we're almost spot on on 200 kilometers per hour so as, and as you can see if I increase the speed let's say nothing changes on the gauge because this is its limit yeah go a bit lower yeah. it's working and now instead of uh, the signal generator I've connected the actual wheel hub with uh, HAL sensor over here, mm, so a, the ABS sensor, right? And now we can observe what's going on when I will spin that. Please observe the needle. See? And I'm spinning the wheel up. The needle is actually going up, and that means that the, uh, the circuit actually works, <laughs> of course. And at the scope, we can see also the signal coming from the hub and it's a square wave of course because it's just a um, already conditions, conditioned uh, signal from the hull sensor and so the lower level is about 1.86 volts over here and the upper one is 3.84 so uh, the amplitude is about 2 volts so Mm, the circuit is actually, mm, let's say, uh, comparing the signal coming from the Hull sensor with a reference voltage of roughly, um, roughly 3 volts, maybe 2.8, so somewhere in the middle. And if it's lower than that, that means that the signal is on the uh, low level, and when it's higher than this 2.8 volts, and it means simply that it's a uh, high level, yeah? And then it's simply calculating the period of those pulses. Uh, and after some recalculation, depending on the wheel size, it will uh, generate another frequency signal for the gauge. That's it. And there's another cool feature that I've added uh, to the circuit. This called this feeling uh, called staging or uh, the opening ceremony, whatever it's called in your neighborhood. So <laughs> please observe what's happening when I turn off the power. Yeah, so the power is off and now I'm turning the power back on. <laughs> yeah, nice. Okay, so nothing else left, uh, just uh, put it on the car and see how it goes. So I need two wires going out from the engine chamber uh, to my dashboard. And what I'm gonna use is this uh, CAT7 Ethernet cable. Uh, this one has a, a four twisted pair. Twisted pair is much better in this case because it's more immune to, to some noise. 
and this is a cat 7 so it also has an individual um, shielding for all the pairs so I'm just gonna use one of those but uh, we'll put the whole wire there so I don't know maybe I will use it in the future for the second uh, ABS sensor or something else Now I'm gonna do some soldering. Uh, this is the original ABS uh, sensor connector. So I don't have the other part, right? So uh, this is the plug, I don't have the socket. So instead of using uh, this original one, I will use the uh, so-called super seal connector. Uh, this is quite rugged and uh, as the name says, super seal, so it's pretty much sealed from water and every other stuff coming into it. Just a quick correction in the speed recalculation and we're good to go.